This week's episode is sponsored by Patreon supporter Devin Brimhall, who requested a look at the biggest Autobot there is. These are the basics on the Titan of Titans, Fortress Maximus. The original Fortress Maximus toy was released in 1987. He was one of the Transformers that today we call Titans, huge robots who transform into entire cities. And famously standing at 22 inches tall, he was the biggest of them all, holding the record as the single largest Transformers toy for over 25 years. Fortress Maximus, or Fort Max as he's often nicknamed, had two alternate modes, a mobile battle station and a city scaled to interact with smaller toys. He was also a headmaster, a kind of transformer whose head disconnected and transformed into a smaller figure. But the toy was so large that unlike the other figures in the range, it had two headmaster partners. Maximus's head converted into the Autobot Cerebros, who could also transform into a communications room for the city mode. And Cerebros's head transformed into Spike Witwicky, the Autobot's human ally from the Transformers cartoon. The set also included the vehicles Gasket and Gromit, who combined to form the small robot Cog. The story of Fortress Maximus and how he became a headmaster was told quite differently in each of the series he appeared in. Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky wrote a profile that characterised Maximus as a valiant and powerful warrior who had come to believe that violence was pointless and counterproductive, and now fought only to ensure that he would never have to fight again. This take on the character was explored in the Marvel comic book, in which Maximus, tiring of the war and seeking to escape it, gathered a crew of like-minded Autobots and led them in leaving Cybertron to start a new life on the planet Nebulos. The native Nebulans feared the Autobots, so Maximus led some of his men in making a dramatic show of good faith, tearing their heads off and surrendering their inactive bodies to the Nebulans to prove they meant them no harm. When the Decepticons subsequently followed Maximus's crew to Nebulos, the Autobots and Nebulans joined forces to fight them, the Nebulans undergoing biomechanical surgery to transform into new heads for the Autobots' bodies, mentally and physically bonding them together as headmasters, with Nebulan leader Galen becoming Fortress Maximus's partner. Now, notably, the comic depicted Fortress Maximus as a regular-sized Autobot instead of a giant. When the Autobots left Nebulos and relocated to Earth, he had his body rebuilt into a larger form, but he still wasn't anything close to the city-sized Titan of the toy line. It was at this point that Cerebros was constructed, a lifeless drone controlled entirely by Galen. Soon after arriving on Earth, Galen was killed in battle, and Spike Witwicky, wanting to join the fight to rescue his brother Buster from the Decepticons, agreed to become Maximus's new partner. After Buster was safely recovered, Spike attempted to retire as Maximus's partner and return to a normal life, but soon discovered that his and Max's minds remained connected even when their bodies were separated. It was Spike's destiny to reunite with Maximus and resume defending the Earth, and their tragically intertwined fates would be further explored in the sequel series 1993's Generation 2 and 2012's Regeneration 1. In the Transformers cartoon, meanwhile, Fortress Maximus was a giant, while Cerebros was a fully sentient Transformer, and it was he, not Maximus, who was the pacifist who wished never to have to fight. As seen in the series' three-part finale, The Rebirth, Cerebros and Spike were part of a group of Autobots who were blasted across the universe to Nebulos by a plasma energy explosion. There, Spike created Fortress Maximus out of a Nebulan city, bonding himself and the reluctant Cerebros together to become part of him, to counter the Decepticon city bot Scorponok. The character was handled even more differently in Japan, 
where The Rebirth wasn't aired, and instead an original animated series was produced, The Headmasters, which totally reinvented both Fortress Maximus and the entire Headmaster concept for the Japanese market. In this series, instead of Spike, the smallest Headmaster figure was a tiny transformer named Fortress and instead of Cerebros, he connected to and controlled a larger, lifeless robot body called a Transtector. This Transtector could, in turn, also transform into a head and connect to Fortress's gigantic transforming battleship, the Maximus, turning Fortress into the colossal robot Fortress Maximus. Where the American cartoon and comic depicted Cerebros with a very different head design from the toy, with a mouthplate and a visor, Fortress's appearance was based directly on the figure. Similar to the Marvel comic, he was the leader of a crew of small robots who fled Cybertron millions of years ago to leave the war behind. These refugees settled on the planet Master, where they developed Headmaster technology to give themselves bigger, stronger bodies that could better endure the planet's harsh climate. The series followed Fortress and his Headmasters as they left Master to rejoin the Autobots on Cybertron, and saw Fortress ascend to the position of Autobot Supreme Commander after Rodimus Prime stepped down and appointed him in his place. The Japanese release of the Fortress Maximus toy included an extra accessory, the huge Master Sword, which was featured in the cartoon as Fortress's signature weapon, which he used to defend the Earth against the evil schemes of Scorponok. In 1988, the Fortress Maximus toy was recolored and re-released exclusively in the Japanese market as a new character named Grand Maximus, Fortress's younger brother. In addition to being a headmaster, Grand was also a pretender, a transformer able to disguise themselves as an organic being, the headmaster robot hiding inside a shell that looked like an armoured human. Grand was featured in that year's Japanese original cartoon, Super God Master Force, helping protect the Earth against the Decepticon Black Zarak. While Fortress returned for a cameo in the Master Force manga, in which he handed Autobot leadership over to the new warrior, Jinrai. The Japanese story continued in the year 2000, when the toy was recolored again and released in the Car Robots toy line as another new character named Brave Maximus. The Brave didn't initially seem related to Fortress and Grand. As seen in the Car Robots cartoon, he was a mysterious Autobot battle station discovered buried on Earth, who had been lying dormant on the planet since ancient times. The final act of the series revolved around the Autobots trying to prevent the evil Predacons from locating the hidden keys to his activation and taking control of him only for it to turn out that the villain's efforts were in vain, as Brave Maximus was programmed to respond only to human beings. The character's origins were later revealed in the Kiss Players radio drama, which explained that Brave had been created by the Transformers god Primus to stand guard over Earth. The drama also connected Brave to the larger Maximus legacy, detailing how, after the events of Car Robots, he embarked on a time-travelling adventure, but wound up crash-landing on the planet Master in the distant past. There, his body was found and studied by Fortress, and became the inspiration for Headmaster technology and Fortress's own battleship. Hasbro brought car robots over to their markets in 2001, rebranding it Robots in Disguise. For this English release, they reworked the series to become its own universe, separate from the larger Japanese cartoon continuity, and renamed Brave Maximus Fortress Maximus. But they were unable to release his toy, as it no longer passed their modern safety tests. Such toy design difficulties might be part of the reason that Fortress Maximus was rarely included in any of the new Transformers series created over the next 15 years.
The closest he got to a television appearance during this time was in Transformers Animated, which in 2009 featured a building named Fortress Maximus as the headquarters of the Autobot Elite Guard on Cybertron. But the show gave no indication that the building was a sentient Transformer. His only new toy was in 2013's Transformers GT, a quirky series that strangely reimagined him as a Nissan GTR sports car. He would, however, enjoy a handful of appearances in comic books, most significantly from IDW Publishing, who followed Marvel's lead and depicted him as a regular size bot instead of a giant. In IDW's stories, Fortress Maximus was an Autobot lawman who served as warden of the prison Garrus 9, until the powerful Decepticon Overlord sacked the facility, and Max was left struggling to overcome the psychological trauma that resulted from the torture he suffered at Overlord's hands. Other comic appearances have included crossovers with G.I. Joe and Star Trek, the latter of which saw him rebuilt to transform into the Starship Enterprise, while stories from the Transformers Collectors Club have presented him as the founder and namesake of the Maximal faction from Beast Wars. It was also in comics that a version of the character was introduced into the live-action movie universe. This take on Fortress reinvented him as a former Decepticon who lost his taste for war after he spent years as a captive of the secret human cabal, the Initiative, who removed his head from his body and used him to power their transforming mobile headquarters. In 2014, Fortress Maximus was dethroned as the tallest Transformer toy by the two-foot-tall Transformers Generations Metroplex figure. But two years later, he got the title back when the Metroplex toy was extensively retooled and made ever so slightly taller to create a new modern Fortress Maximus figure for 2016's Titan's Return toy line. Two versions of the toy were released. The regular retail edition, for which Cerebros' head was based on his appearance in the original cartoon and comic, and a Comic-Con exclusive, which included a Master Sword and a head for Cerebros based on Fortress from The Headmasters. Instead of Spike, though, Titan's Return paired Cerebros with a tiny robot called Emissary, named after Brave Maximus' partner from Robots in Disguise. Cog wasn't included, but a complimentary figure of the character was released a few years later in 2019's Siege. As the colossal centerpiece of the line, the new figure ensured Fortress Maximus a role in Machinima's Titan's Return webtoon, a series set long after the end of the war, in which Maximus had to be reactivated after years of dormancy by Emissary and the Autobot telepath Windblade to battle the rampaging Decepticon Titan, Trypticon. The toy was further promoted with a tie-in story arc in IDW's comics, which saw the comic's regular size version of Maximus acquire a gigantic body when he used a brain implant invented by Cerebros to take mental control of an inner Titan in order to stop an army of zombie city bots controlled by the evil Sentinel Prime. The Titan's Return toy was also released in Japan's Transformers Legends toy line, where it was further recolored to better match the character's appearance in The Headmasters, and a Legends-exclusive Grand Maximus recolor was also available. These toys earned the brothers appearances in the tie-in Legends manga, which additionally included the return of Brave Maximus, with a redesigned body styled after the new toy. Though the release of the 27-inch tall War for Cybertron Unicron figure in 2021 once again cost Fortress Maximus his crown as the tallest Transformers toy, he still left a massive footprint in the franchise's history. The biggest Autobot, the boldest warrior, the bravest heart, a true titan in every sense of the word. 
And those are the basics on Fortress Maximus. Thanks to Devin for sponsoring this episode. Which take on him is your favourite? Do you prefer him gigantic or regular size? Head on down to the comments and let me know. More Patreon sponsored episodes are coming up, so be sure to subscribe and check them out.